questions? Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Public comment. I do not believe we have any public comment signed up. And we'll move on to four approval of the September 6, 2022 Public Safety Committee meeting minutes. Motion made. Do I have a second? Second. Motion made. And second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Policy issue discussion and potential com uh, committee determination. None. Operational functions required by uh, statute, ordinance, resolution, or policy. If it's okay with the body, could we move 7A up? Any? No? Good? All right. With that, we will turn it to 7A, uh, Life Saving Metal Award, and I'll turn it over to Share Parks. Thank you. Jim, you want to come up too? It, it is, but you were part of it. I don't have an award for you, but you were uh, one of the key players also. I appreciate you allowing us to take a few minutes out of uh, your meeting to provide Deputy Nick Marcel with the Sheriff's Life Saving Award. Every day, law enforcement professionals go out there and make an impact in their communities, but there's no greater day as when you can go out there and actually save someone's life, especially someone who's making some very incredible choices under disturbing conditions and provide them a second opportunity. On September 20th, 2022, at around 12.08 12, 12, hours, Deputy Nick Marcel was in the area and was flagged down by passerbys in this area telling him that there is a subject that is on top of the parking lot ramp right across the street on 5th at the top tier level and was looking to jump from the top of it. Uh, Jim Hellroad from Wausau Police Department was closer. Nick called it in to the communication center and uh, Jim responded up there beating Nick to the ledge. Uh, Jim was able to get a hold of the person as the person was dangling from the side of the of the ramp. Jim maintained a grasp and uh, Jim I'm gonna steal your words from me man. Uh, when I talked to him afterwards he basically said that he was at that point where he was he was losing strength because of the weight and the fight that was taking place. And all of a sudden he heard Deputy Nick Marcel yell out, hang on, I'm coming. And Nick Marcel then ran, leaped up onto that side wall, using the wall as leverage, reached down, grabbed that individual, and pulled the person back over across the wall to safety and allowed that person to then receive some type of treatment and hopefully get on with a better life. So. That's condensing down an incredible event in a very short period of time. But with that, with those actions, Nick, I want to provide you with the Sheriff's Life Saving Award for saving a person's life on that particular day. He didn't just save her life. If things would have been shown up when he did, um, yeah, it probably would have been my last day of the PD, and it probably would have been a whole lifetime of therapy and uh, psychiatrists trying to get the image of that girl falling out of my head. So I am so grateful for you that uh, what you did. 
Thank you very much, and thank you guys. All right, with that, we're going to move on to 6A, a resolution requesting the state of Wisconsin to review and revise the ever entry-level compensation rate for assistant district attorneys. I'll start, Mr. Chair, and I think uh, we have several members from the district attorney's office here, but as this committee is well aware, as we've talked about in the past, the criminal justice system is dependent on a, a whole host of stakeholders and participants that uh, every day work to uh, affect, uh, affect justice in our community, and one of those central players is the Marathon County District Attorney's Office and the assistant district attorneys and office staff that comprise that office. The resolution in your packet relates to assistant district attorneys, and again, just for background, uh, the partnership we have with the state relative to the DA's office is that the state of Wisconsin, uh, they employ, it employs, I should say, the assistant district attorneys. The county is tasked by statute with providing necessary office support for uh, them to do the important work that they do. Uh, so the resolution before you talks and provides a great history of the challenges that have existed relative to recruiting and retention for those uh, vitally important prosecutors and like I said we have two individuals uh, three individuals actually from the DA's office that uh, are here to answer any questions and expound upon what is in the resolution we have uh, Deputy District Attorney Molly Lawrence and we have Assistant District Attorney Kyle Mayo as well as Ruth Heinzel the diversion uh, coordinator so with that I'll turn it over to them and have them provide any additional comments they might offer to provide Good afternoon, everyone. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I will indicate that the state um, has done a market study of surrounding states and their uh, starting assistant DA or prosecutor uh, positions. And in each of the states, they did Iowa, Minnesota, and Michigan. And all of those states uh, start just over $35. Um, they're all under 36, but within 35 to $36. And we're currently uh, set at 26.70 an hour for uh, starting prosecutors. We've had um, now three prosecutors in the last two months that have left our office and they've all gone to different jobs that actually pay significantly more money. Uh, it wasn't from their resignation letters, it had nothing to do with our office or anything with Marathon County, it's just it's a better salary for uh, their families. So if you have any questions I'd be happy to answer if I can. So what would you like to start uh, start new employees off at? Like, would you want to be at what the rate is, like what I was, or do you want to be a little more? Can, because it, does each, because I'm assuming these people must be lawyers. So they went to, got a bachelor's degree and then went on to law school. Yeah, $26 an hour is kind of. So our ask uh, of the state legislator, uh, it would start in the, in the next budget cycle is to start new prosecutors off at $35 an hour. Uh, and then for existing prosecutors, uh, raise their salaries also so we don't get a situation where someone that comes in uh, right that first day, January 1st of 2024, starts at 35, but we have people that have been here for four or five years that aren't at that level yet. Um, we are dependent on the legislator every budget cycle for raises. There's no automatic raise uh, built in for us. And so if the legislator decides to give us a raise, they can, otherwise they don't have to. Um, this current budget cycle that we're in, uh, the two-year budget cycle, normally the fiscal year starts in, I believe it's July, July or August 1st, uh, and that's when raises would normally take effect. Uh, they push that back to January of each year, and they cut uh, our pay progression step in half. So we got half of what the statute says we should get for those two years. So people that have started and been here for several years aren't, aren't at that 35 yet. So we're asking to bump everyone up as well for that so that it doesn't create that situation where someone new is making more. 
And just one thing I'd like to add is when, when we met with the, the, the DA's office and the public defender's office, there's a huge gap of, of attorneys at this point. So this is needed. Um, it was both of them extreme, <laughs> extremely low, as you can see, wage-wise for an attorney. So I guess at this point, if there's any more questions, it'd be first and second of all, if not, I'd like to hear somebody maybe make a motion to approve the resolution. I'd like to make a motion to accept the resolution requesting the state of Wisconsin to review and revise the entry level compensation rate for assistant district attorneys. I have a motion on the floor. Do I have a second? Second. Who wants to have the second? Tim is going to have the second. All those in favor? All right. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. All right, then we'll move on to 6B, Marathon Mitigation Plan Resolution, Full Draft Marathon Mitigation Plan. Uh, Lance, you want to kick this off? Certainly I can do that, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, we have, again, uh, Phil Rentmeester, our Emergency Management Director, as well as uh, Corporation Council Pierner here, uh, much like your previous meeting where they discussed with you uh, updates to uh, Chapter 6, which is later on in your agenda again, um, but they're going to do the same thing with respect to the Marathon County Hazard Mitigation Plan. I'll talk through some of the modifications they've made to that plan, why the modifications are necessary, and then just a matter of housekeeping, jumping down to Item 6C, uh, you reviewed the proposed revisions to Chapter 6 of the Code of Ordinances. Um, however, there was no action taken by the committee to move those on to the full board. So both of these uh, items are before you today. Um, based on your jurisdiction as a committee, it falls, uh, emergency management falls under that jurisdiction. So you would be taking action should you agree with the proposed revisions within Item 6B and 6C to forward those on to the county board for consideration. With that, though, I'll kick it over to, to Mike and to Phil. Go ahead, Phil. Good afternoon. The hazard mitigation plan link is in your packet. I would just open it up for any questions that you may have on that mitigation plan and if there's any questions on why we're doing what we're doing. Any questions by the body? If not, then I would. It's page five, actually. I do have one. I saw the term shall be at the pleasure of the county administrator. Can that be at like discretion? <laughs> or I don't know, pleasure just seems kind of odd for. No, that's the standard language but, for at will employees, and any employee in corporation council can come in and uh, clarify. But generally speaking, appointed department heads are employed at the at the pleasure of the county administrator uh, you by previous action of the board uh, several terms ago removed uh, various provisions within ordinance that required confirmation of department head appointments uh, with the exception of the health officer which is required by statute so phil's position um, similar to um, social services director or any of the other department heads that don't expressly by ordinance or state statute required county board approval are employed at the uh, at the pleasure of the county administrator of course okay. any elected department heads uh, are elected by the voters and serve out their terms absent action by any uh, statutory body that has the ability to remove them okay because usually i see like discretion or something that's why i just was curious thank you and certainly that uh, use of at the pleasure is is a legal term of art that's used in employment at will employment context it does have the same legal meaning as as at the discretion um uh, it, it certainly would be within the the committee's authority to make a, a change to the language but it is really a legal term of art that reflects the at will employment um relationship between the emergency management director and the, the county administrator so i I guess my legal recommendation would be that um, you leave the term because it does have a meaning in law. That's fine. Thank you. Anything further? Go ahead. 
have you decided who is going to be appointed from the board yet on the committee? Uh, no, we have not. We would seek your recommendation on that, on who would be appointed, whether it be the county board chair or the public safety committee chair. All right, anything further on this resolution? All right, then I would entertain a motion. And a motion, or a second? Second. Oh, Jane will have the second. All right, motion made and second, all in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. All right, we'll move on to 6C then. Uh, proposed revisions to Chapter 6 of the Marathon County Court of Ordinance. You've all have the packet. You've looked through it, I assume. I think what they're looking from us is a, a adoption to send to the full board, a recommendation to accept by the full board. Correct, Phil? Yes, please. Just to clarify, did we just approve the all-hazard mitigation plan? Yes. Okay. Yes, we're looking for resolution for adoption of both the all hazard mitigation plan and the changes to Chapter 6 in the municipal ordinance. Thank you. So, any questions on Chapter 6 for either? Go ahead, Tim. I got a question. Um, the 6.03, it, it, it says they're asking for one, one elected county supervisor. I, I'd like to ask for a few more, maybe, if it's possible. Out of four, like, four, there's 14 on the committee, I guess. It's saying at least one of the 14 members. Oh, so there can be more than one? Can be more. Oh, okay. Yep. Would you like to see it making sure there is more, or would you like to leave it um, how it is? Yeah, I'd like to see a few more, maybe, maybe like three or just to get more representation for the voters and stuff. <clears throat> Phil, do you want to provide some background on what the LEPC um, does in terms of its standard meetings and sure. the work that you do? Sure, the LEPC meets on a quarterly basis at the Emergency Management Office on West Street. And the participants in the group, and I believe we talked about this before, just as a review, we have a uh, federally mandated members of the committee that have to be in there, whether it's elected officials, whether it's members of the media, whether it's members of the facilities of the offsite plans that we're developing for them. Public safety certainly has to be in there, law enforcement, fire. And there is a, a category called first aid, but this is an older statute, so we're looking at it more as EMS at this time. And we do have members of the citizen groups as well. The elected officials, we would certainly welcome additional members if you're interested, but we do meet the f second Tuesday on a quarterly basis, so our next meeting would be in December, December 8th, I believe, at 2 o'clock. And that's our typical times for meeting. And depending on the amount of plans that we're looking at, or in this case, the LEPC was our community group that helped develop the hazard mitigation plan for the county. So there's a little bit more work that's associated with that. It's not just all chemical emergencies. For example, I'm probably going to task the LAPC in the Janu upcoming months in January with development of an integrated preparedness plan to identify the capabilities, well, basically looking at the hazard mitigation plan, the hazards that we're facing in the county, assessing our capabilities to respond to those hazards and addressing any shortfalls, whether it's through equipment, exercising, training, planning, or organization issues such as uh, plans and protocols. So that'll be their next uh, task that I'm going to be asking them to do. I guess, I guess my comment to that, um, Supervisor Sandalski, is I think one or two possibly, because this is more of a hands-on people that are in the emergency management system, whereas, yeah, we can have some oversight to go see what's going on in it. For, but for the most part, from what I'm gathering, it's more of a professionals saying this is what we should be doing, this is how we typically do these are the policies we make to, to meet what we can do and if we have people on the board that are versed in that fine if they're not then really I don't know what the point of having more on there would be I guess that'd be my thought I guess if I'm wrong tell me I'm wrong as far as am I hearing that correctly about how they kind of work that's correct we essentially reach out to those groups that we have to have represented and ask for 
a subject matter expert or somebody that's interested in participating in the committee to do the the assessment of the plans or develop these other uh, functional areas as well and yeah typically they do have a background in public safety Go ahead, Mike. thank you thank you mr. chair just to expand a little bit on the membership um, we tried to craft craft the language here to reflect what federal law requires for these uh, local emergency planning committees uh, so what federal law indicates is there has to be at least one uh, elected official uh, as a member we tried to narrow that and make sure that because it wasn't previously clear in our rules that that elected official should be a county board member uh, so that's that's why we crafted it the way we do uh, there's certainly nothing that would prohibit you from uh, requiring more than one member but I, I guess I would agree with uh, the chair and what Phil indicated as well that this group is really a hands-on group to, to develop and advise um, the ultimate uh, creation of any plans then go through the committee process to hear into the full board as well so um, as far as an oversight piece that's how the LEPC would connect with the full board yeah, that makes sense I guess they kind of so the the, the the like our public safety and our county board who kind of oversees the okay that, that makes sense thank you that's correct so with that is that are we okay with leaving as is at this point okay any further questions on the revisions if not I'll entertain a motion to accept and send to the county board for their consideration I'll make that motion Gene made the motion second by uh, Supervisor Marash all in favor Aye. Any Aye. opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. Oh, by the way, that's Gene with a J. <laughs> it was coming at this meeting at some point. Six <laughs> uh, <laughs> D rate approval for the juvenile facility. What do we want to? Chad, do you want to deal with that or? I think Chad and Carrie are here to talk about uh, the juvenile facility and some of the work that they've been doing as, again, just for background, and I know I'm probably repeating myself, but uh, very frequently this committee has looked at the rates that we set for uh, housing at our juvenile facility, and we've undertaken a bit of an examination. I know we've talked more about shelter home uh, and the services we provide there but also we've had similar conversations with the juvenile facility as part of our annual budget work um, sheriff's office leadership and uh, have met with Christy and I to really talk through what are some opportunities to maybe do some things differently to uh, in increase the census that we have at our facility how can we look at doing things a little bit differently and Chad is gonna take just a few minutes to talk to you about that effort and uh, he might have an ask of you Thank you, Lance. So just a little bit of history on how this works with, with the ask about the facility is typically when we assess fees or ask for fees for services, they either have to be approved via ordinance or they have to be approved by a standing committee in order for us to do that. So at the end of this, I'm gonna be asking for your permission to assess fees for the secure detention center. Now, if you recall the shelter home we used to run and that was a service primarily to social services and to some other counties when they needed basically, I know the best, it, it's not a kid that's a juvenile justice kid per se, but maybe there's a need for shelter placement. They have to be placed out of the home for child protective reasons. It could be a, a myriad of things. And when we did that assessment, we looked at it with social services and ultimately decided that shelter services were not in the best interest of Marathon County to provide because there were other people in the private sector that could provide that. And most counties do it that way. They're working with private businesses, private organizations in order to provide that service. When you look at secure detention centers, these are places typically where social services, the, the youth justice team will work with the DA's office as well as with the courts and they will actually place a child in our secure center sometimes before they're headed to other higher levels of care like Lincoln Hills so that's kind of an in-between but think of it as in a jail for juveniles that can't go to a shelter home or foster care or some other setting 
What we know is that Marathon County, on average, will have one to two kids in that facility that are our responsibility. The, the facility can hold up to 20. That's our max capacity. However, the state will never allow you to hold or hold people in your facilities at maximum capacity. You need to have a buffer in order to have some room to move kids around if you have someone who's disruptive or let's just say there's a huge influx of people that need to come into the facility, you've got to have that gap. So what we're looking to do is fill those beds that we wouldn't otherwise use. And in working with Kerry Pulowski, who is the lieutenant out of that facility, he's also the superintendent of that facility, we believe that anywhere between 11 and 13 beds full at any given time allows us to make that facility cost neutral. And what I mean by that is that if we could find other county partners to pay for a bed at that facility, like we pay other counties to house our adult inmates, then we could make that facility basically pay for itself. The staffing, the upkeep, the maintenance, we went through the utilities, water, lights, heat, um, general maintenance and upkeep. If you have to replace a roof on a facility like that or resurface a blacktop, any of those things cost big money. We looked at what those costs would be. And what we believe is a reasonable fee for other counties is $250 a day for their, their child that would, they would place there. Now you may say that's a lot of money compared to an adult, but we're talking volume. We're not talking 50 or 60 inmates from an adult center with different needs. We're talking about a small number of kids that require the same level of 24 seven supervision, care, medical, um, food service, you name it. There's a lot of things that go into that. So what we did earlier this, well, it was actually late last month is I sent a letter to every chief deputy in the state. The jail administrator sent a letter to every jail administrator in the state, and we asked social services to send letters to every human services department in the state in order to tell them we're opening that facility back up, we're looking to have partners in it, and if we get enough partners, then we will be able to run that facility at a at a cost savings to the county and it's so it fits our need and it fits their need. What we know is that a number of facilities are facing the same things we are. We're hearing, we can't confirm, but that Brown County is in the same boat and they're looking to close theirs. Uh, we've heard Fond du Lac County is struggling. I spoke with the chief deputy in La Crosse County. They are struggling with staffing and can't keep theirs open. So there is a need for these types of facilities in the state. We just need to see whether or not these counties have an interest in doing it. Many of them are going through the same things we are right now with their budget process. So we're getting some feedback. I've heard from Lincoln County. I've heard from Oneida County, Vilas County. Kyrie, have you heard from anybody on your end? Brown County. So um, Waukesha County's their chief deputy was sending it to their human services because they may have some interest. So this is far reaching. But when you look at Bayfield County and St. Croix County, there's Eau Claire that does this. But other than that, in the Northwoods, we're it. So if we close this facility because we don't have any kids to put in it, then everybody's going to suffer in the Northwoods. So we want to open that door and give everyone the opportunity to jump on with us if they're willing to do that. So what we would like to do is raise the rate for a contracted bed, which means that they would agree to pay for one bed 365 days of the year, whether they use it or not. Smaller counties would have the ability to partner with other small counties to like buy one bed. So let's just use Florence and Forest as an example. If they wanted to work together and share that, they could. And I know some counties are already talking about doing that. But they would buy a certain number of beds and our the number we have to hit is 11. If we hit 11, we can do this. So we, are, we have got feelers out to them right now to see if they would be interested in that. I think that what some counties will want to do is they'll think, oh, the rate's $250 a day. Yeah, I don't want to sign a contract for the whole year. I'm willing to risk it and just see how this works out. And we are not interested in a contract that's just come when you want. 
We would allow for counties that don't want to enter into a contract to contract a bed from us, but we would ask that you set that rate at $500 a day. And speaking with the finance director, she believes that that is reasonable based upon the uncertainty and the need in order to have those funds available in order to fund the facility. If a county enters into a contract with us and they exceed 365 bed days, we would allow them to fill those at the contracted rate because they are a partner and we're in it together. So that's our vision right now for what we would like you to consider and approve for us so that we can move that forward in the event we have interest. I have a couple questions right away. All right, so for a full year, if, if let's say you're Lincoln County, you want to do it, it's, you're looking at $91,000 basically. Um, if we have, let's say, seven partners, eight partners, and they have a second person, you're getting them the 250. The people that don't want to contract it, I would assume the people we are contracting are first come, first serve. Like we would say, nope, they've contracted with us, so they get that other bed. Absolutely. Okay. They, be, they are up. We're, we are considering this a partnership. We're in, in it yeah. together. That's, that was my pleasure. Any other any questions from the committee? Go ahead. Um, do you have, do we have a sta enough staffing for this? We do. So we are planning to reopen that facility on October 17th. Uh, but what we're going to do right now is we're going to open it just to males. We, we don't have enough female staff to allow uh, female inmates in, youth offenders in. So we're going to have to do that slow as we recruit and bring in additional female staff. Go ahead. Um, if somebody comes in, let's say you have a person that has 15 years experience in another county and they want to move here. Now, if, if, as in corrections or whatever, would they get the same, would they start out, out at the bottom and work their way up with experience or do you guys give higher pay scales for people with more experience, you know, to draw people in from other counties? Yep. is what we need to look at too. So two things, and I know you've heard it from not only us, but the county administrator and um, uh, the uh, employee resources director. A lot of things hinge on, on the new uh, compensation package uh, plan that's being proposed. Even aside from that, we currently do have what we call a lateral entry rate. That lateral entry rate is about $1.50 more an hour to come to us with experience. And that experience threshold we have is three years. If you come to us for three years, you come in at a higher rate. Depending upon what happens with the compensation study and what's approved, that rate will likely change upward. Because the, the one issue is, so if you have a person that's making high, because we were doing, being an accounting play, you gain as you go. And if they're working for one county and they wanted to come over, it'd be a quite a bit of a drop just to start over somewhere else than to stay where they're at. And it definitely, I mean, I'm just looking at it because like in the private sector, hey, we're gonna give you this amount of money if you come here, and boom, people are jumping over. Where if they have the experience and we have a higher pay scale, you might get draw some of these people in. You know, the simple way to respond to your question, we do not, Marathon County is not on a step system. So to your point, you don't start over if you come with experience, we do have mechanisms within our plan to gauge what that is and put people within uh, the schedule appropriately. As uh, Chad referenced, our real struggle has been our schedule has not kept pace with the rest of the world. Um, that's why when Chad says, you know, a lot of things hinge on that uh, adoption of that revised compensation schedule, I couldn't agree more. I, um, was drafting the budget the last several days and I still have a little bit of work to do to get it put in the put on the website by tomorrow morning there is a lot of references to that class compensation study within that budget because making sure that we have uh, you know high quality skilled and talented staff to deliver all the services that we have that is central to the work we do you've heard it at this committee um, you know, we talk a lot about jail census and the cost of out-of-county out of placements, whether we're talking about uh, juvenile offenders or adult offenders. Uh, maintaining census in the jail and managing budget, our biggest challenge, as I see it right now, is not the number of inmates that the court is, the judges are saying need to be held. It's whether or not we have the staff necessary to 
house them to the greatest extent we can within the county. So short answer to your question, I know that was a long rambling answer, but the short answer is we do have mechanisms within our policies to provide uh, some level of additional compensation that people would bring uh, should they accept employment with the county based on their training and experience. Thank you. So what are you asking of, uh, we're just asking for our, our blessing? Yes. You want that in the form of a motion or do you just want I our blessing? I think that would be appropriate to have All a right. motion. I would like to make a motion to accept the rate approval for the juvenile facility. I have a motion by Supervisor Marsh. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Who, who wants to be the second? <laughs> I will say the second is by Supervisor Wilhelm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carried. In the minutes, can we memorialize the $250 rate and the $500 rate? Because when we go looking for it, sometimes it's nice just to have that in there. Yes. So it is written, so it shall be done. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Charlton Thank Heston. You Charlton Heston. Just say All right, moving on. Thank you, Chad. 8A, committee members are asked to bring future ideas for discussion. Um, 8B, next meeting is November 8th, 2022 at 1.30 p.m. And then I will take nine. Motion to adjourn, do I have a second? Second? Yep, second. motion made in second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Motion carried, thank you, everyone.